The ETA that the master transmits to the port is very important because an up-to-date ETA of the vessel goes via the harbour master to the pilot, the tugs, boatman and terminal. The ETA is therefore the basis for planning these links in the chain. The terminal operator sends the mooring plan and the manifold information to the vessel. Important information for having the lines in the right place on arrival and preparing the manifold. This can easily make a difference of half an hour when docking. To ensure quick and safe movement in the port, it is essential that the VTS is aware of all the vessels and their planned actions. For every vessel this means, report fully and listen properly, because each vessel forms part of a single large logistical operation in a port. Thanks for the Mistral. Are you on the line? When the vessel is being brought in, everything revolves around the pilot. He knows the local conditions, and he coordinates the tugs and boatmen for the master. Uh, you are waiting at the low light for me? Being able to get on board safely is of course a first requirement. With a good ladder, safely secured. The pilot informs the master of his intended maneuver. It is very important that the master and the pilot both have the same information on the port and the terminal right up to the mooring plan at the terminal, so that everything can be made ready on deck. Alas, daily practice often shows a lack of this information exchange. Of course, English is the language of communication on the bridge. The uh, crew four and a half, quarter past two, please. Much relies on good communication between all those parties involved in the complex operations in a port. For example, it's useful for a master to know the rendezvous point with the tugs. That way, he can ensure that his crew is standing by on deck in good time. Be aware that a last-minute change to an action costs a great deal of time. On a 350-metre vessel, it takes 10 minutes to walk from bow to stern. At a harbour speed of 6 knots, by then the vessel is a mile further. Therefore, the rendezvous point of tugs for the master is very important to have the crew stand by. The correct place to throw the forward heaving line is from the back of the forward mooring deck. Good preparation saves a lot of time when mooring. It starts with the correct information from the terminal. Which manifold? What will be the position of the wing of the bridge? A clear mooring plan also saves time. Then it is immediately apparent from which deck the spring lines must be paid out. Having the boatman take the lines ashore by boat saves a great deal of time. While this is being done, a member of the vessel's crew looks over the rail to check that there is not too much nor too little slack. Okay, slack. With some companies we put a bowman on the vessel. The, the time saved is worth more than the cost, especially on the large vessels with a small deck crew. The increasing size of vessels creates ever heavier demands on safety. For example, the use of quick release hooks. Equipment that measures distance and approach speed gives everyone the same information and can prevent damage to a fender, which can easily cost 10,000 euros. Docking at the terminal goes quickest when everything is well prepared on board, on the basis of the data that the vessel has received earlier from the terminal. Planning of jetties and pipelines is crucial at the terminal. Uh, for that, it's important that FOPAC timely gets the right information and that all parties, like tugboats, linemen, surveyors, captains, uh, all work closely together. The vessel is safely moored alongside and the gangway is in positioning. Time saved, less irritation, cost savings, more cargo per vessel. 
better utilisation of the port and terminal capacity. That is all possible by improving cooperation between all the partners in this chain. It's possible and it must happen because vessels are getting bigger and the spot market for bulk cargoes means that increasingly vessels put in ad hoc at a port and want to be served more quickly. And all that with a smaller crew, probably with less experience. Quite a challenge. The key lies in strengthening the complete chain and that starts with understanding each other, understanding what the other is doing and considering how to make a particular link stronger. It's very important that, that we realise that we have to work as a team. Everyone is heavily occupied with his own link. It would be good to look at the neighbouring links. In fact, it is amazing that we as professionals have to improvise so much. It is probably one of the first times that we've addressed it jointly and it's an ideal opportunity to identify the problem, to strengthen our bonds between the members of the chain and to improve the service we offer. We as Harbour Masters, we also have a challenge. We will strive to strengthen the nautical chain by providing better information for all the partners in the chain. But it is now time to look together to, on, on how to improve the nautical chain as a whole. And that will lead to safer, cleaner, smoother shipping operations in the port area. And that will lead to more pleasure for the vessels entering our port. It's all about the quality of the chain. Goodbye.